Hey, it's John and Mike from Brew-Shoes.com. Tonight we're drinking one of my favorite styles, if not my favorite style wow, for sure. that's saying something. Tonight is, uh, we're drinking a brown ale. So I re-brewed my community brew. Because if you remember from when we did it, um, you I, I liked yours especially. Mine, you know, was sort of there, but I was really unhappy with the finishing gravity. I finished sort of high, hmm. so it finished at like, mine finished at like 10, 17, 10, 18 or something. It's just, for some reason, just finished too high. Um, so I wanted to rebrew it to see if I could overcome that issue, um, which we did. And then, uh, but I also wanted to tweak the recipe a little bit at that point. If I was going to do it, I wanted to tweak it. I just, I felt like it needed, some of the flavors needed to be lightened up a little bit. And the color needed to just be a little bit lighter in order to make it feel more, I didn't want it to definitively be brown. And um, <laughs> I didn't want it to be as light as Newcastle, but I think the previous version was a little bit, too dark for my liking, so um, I nice want to, I wanted to tweak highlights. a little bit. Yeah. So um, anyway, so this is what we did. So the I'm last sorry. recipe was, you know, Golden Promise was the community brew from before. I switched over to Maris Otter for other reasons, <laughs> um, which we'll get to later. Yep. But the primary tweak here is that before we used. Um, some chocolate malt that I had about half, well, I had half pound of medium crystal, half pound of chocolate malt, and a half pound of special roast. Uh, in this one, I lightened up the chocolate malt a little bit, and I backed off to um, about a two ounces less than that of what we had before. So I was more at, what did we have? So this says five ounces. I know that that's wrong. So, <laughs> but I, I think it was a, I was at half a pound when I brewed it the first time of the Which chocolate malt. Which recipe is I went down to six ounces okay. on the... So the, you're comparing the, this is, this the two. The yep. Okay. And so, and then I also changed the yeast up. We, I used the ESB yeast before. Yeah, okay. And I wasn't happy with that fermentation. So I went back to a yeast that I know really well, which is the English dry... Yeah. WLP 07. Okay. Um, That's what I'm tasting. And yeah. it dried out. So, like, my finishing gravity this time was 10.09. So it's dry and it's nice. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. It, so that, and when it gets drier like that, you don't have as much, like, there's not a, a you sort of clean up the complexity a little bit. There's a, there's the a viscosity muddy, yeah, to the it, muddy there's a muddiness is, to it. That, which, yeah. And you allow the specialty yeah. malts to sort of clean up a little bit when it's dry. What I was going to say, like, when it's when it's not dry, when you have those finishing gravities of, like, 10, 12, like, yep. I, the, the flavors get a little, um, they're not as sharp. This is, this has a, yep. these, the flavors here to me are sharp. Like, they're, it's clean, it's, it finishes dry, and, like, all the different components are, like, sharp. Like, I think, a real British... Yeah. Ale should be. Yep. So just a rundown on this. So th uh, this version, it's about 88% Maris Otter, 4.4% medium crystal, 4.4% mm. special roast, Yep. 3.3% 3 .3 of uh, chocolate malt. That, those are the malts. Okay. And it's dry English ale yeast. I also changed the hops a little bit because it's gonna just what I had available. Hops. So I went for Challenger hops to bitter, one ounce of Challenger hops. And then I did two ounces of East Kent Golding um, right at the end of the boil with, uh, what, is it, what does it say here? Um, it's a boil hop. So I, I dropped these in with 10 minutes to go. So what's, so, what was the alpha on the uh, Challenger? The Challenger is 8.9%. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, which is a high alpha for these types of English I was going to say. Right? It's, this uh, is the last time we went all Kent Goldings. And, you know, I have no problem with going all, all EKG, but... Um, I just wanted to again mix that up a little bit too. Um, it's noticeably more bitter than the, yeah. the last one you uh, you brewed. Because I think I was a little bit gun shy, a little bit afraid of if the gravity. Right, I wanted to make sure I had the bitterness to counteract it. Yep. Yep. Uh, but I think there's just the right amount yep. of bitterness. Yeah, yeah. In it, here. it all kind of uh, blends in. Again, it's it's got <laughs> it's got that British character, which um, you know if when I when you if you ever traveled to England. Um, all the beers that I had on tap like had a certain character and I was like mm -hmm. okay this is what I'd love to make at home yeah. but I I don't live in England and I do yeah. the best I can with what I got so I know this is kind of like something you've alluded to in previous videos yes that you're kind of working with not only water chemistry yes but also was it what well, you're mashing what are you doing <laughs> yes so okay. so we'll we'll get into it in 
the another next, video, the next, next video. video. Okay. But my focus here, this beer, I wanted to rebrew the brown ale. Yep, to get that I, right. I love brown ale, I want yep. it to be right. Um, but I also was incorporating not just some recipe tweaks, but some process tweaks, just to try to get that attenuation where it needed to be. Yeah. Just get a more fuller attenuation. I think that's what was achieved here, yeah. right? And um, paying a little more attention to chloride to sulfide balance, which we'll talk about in the next video. Okay. But, um, so anyway, yeah, I think this is, for me, I think this is pretty much where I want a brown ale to be. There's a, it's almost like got a nut brown nose to it. Yeah. Which is maybe not exactly what I want, but it's, but I'm but it's willing there. to take it. Um, the, the interesting thing is that the, I think the caramel crystal malt character isn't too strong. Yeah. Would you want that a little stronger though? No. I, I like it the way you it like is. It the way it I is think better. if I can pull some of that nut brown nose out of it, which I think would probably come from the special roast, if I knock the special roast down to say six ounces from eight, I'll lose a little bit of that aroma. Um, and then I think whatever is in there, the, the, the yeah. medium crystal, will stand out a little bit more. Mm. But even aside from that, just the way it is, it's perfectly fine. If I wanted more of that to come out, maybe a slightly more ester forward yeast strain. Yeah. So a really big pitch of, or just a stronger, I think it's really process is why I got bad attenuation. So going back to the ESB yeast, which a lot of people love that yeast, yep. uh, going back to that yeast would probably give me a little bit more ester character, which might make the crystal malt sing more. You're right. But I'm very, very, very happy with this. <laughs> Just, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I think that the uh, the estuary character of some of those these would um, add a, a nice, pleasant, another layer yeah. of complexity to this, and it would be it's very, It's hard to get the right delicious. color to show up on camera. Mm. I'm not going to try. But, but when you hold it up, I mean, it's decidedly brown. So one last question, and then we can wrap yes. it up. Okay. What was your what was the what was the water that you used and what kind of additions did you add to it to make it what it is? This is two to one chloride to sulfate. Okay, and I uh, use a little bit of acid in the mash to just adjust okay. for mash pH. Um, and I use I use our tap water. Our okay. tap water has become surprisingly more soft than what it used to yes, be. Yes, true that. We haven't fully got the numbers on it, but I can definitely taste it, and that's. No thing to go on, but for the sake <laughs> of this other project that we're referencing in the next video, um, I didn't want to worry about that too much. Yeah. So anyway, the, the idea here is I'm go I was striking a chord, two to one chloride to sulfate because I want it to be multi, and then I'm doing a, an acid adjustment with lactic acid in the. Well, you could just as well phosphoric acid, but this is really sm for this because of the um, the dark malts requires less acid than say making a paleo. Yep. I think this probably only had one ml of lactic acid in the mash, four and a half gallon mash. Cool, well, you know what? I think you had it. The only thing that I would say is like the challenger is a little strong, but like I think- Yeah, like, I could dial that back to but, a few less grams. Yes. I think it would be, yeah, I agree. But I think the, the hop quality is exactly where you want to be. Yeah. Like I, yeah. that I, like I would emulate, like I would want to emulate it. Well, I, I do emulate for my beers. Like I, but I never get to this point. I think that yeah. you've got something here with the water chemistry and what you use for like how you put the, the hops into this boil. I think that's what made it what it is. And of course, you know, I think we always have like our, our grain bills down for the most part. Like yeah, we yeah. know what we need. Yeah. But uh, well, you, you know, I you get the hop to, right. Yeah, yeah. The min, like there's a mineral quality to hops in English ales that I've mm -hmm. always wanted to get. Yeah, and here it is, right here. You know, the funny thing is too is I've always been a pretty diehard, and almost all the English style beer I make, and that's like probably fifty percent or more of what I make. Mm. I've always just been a all EKG guy, and you? I never really mix it up, right? Maybe so we should try Fuggles sometimes. Maybe we should try some Fuggles. Um, but so for this one, just I think I had an ounce of Challenger that I had bought and was like, oh, I guess I should use this. So I used it to do this. Really, I really wasn't ex I wasn't really focused on how the beer would come out yeah. because it's part of a larger project of just getting attenuation right. Um, but it ended up coming out great. Excellent. Well, thank you for this beer. Cheers to you, friend. Thank you, sir. And I can't wait for the next video for the big reveal of everything you've been working on in the background. So suspenseful. Yeah, <laughs> for the past, what, six, seven months? Maybe. Maybe. December. All right. Yeah.
Well, I think the things we've learned for uh, this is that water chemistry is very important for English styles. And if you can dial that in, especially if it's something like, all right, I made this beer and I think it's okay. But yeah. like if I taste commercial examples of it and I know that there's elements that those have and my beer does yeah. not, these are things to work on. And I think like water chemistry for sure is yeah. part of it. Yeah. And uh, I can't well, Let's not oversell it because yeah. we'll talk about was, water chemistry Okay. In the near future. Okay. But like, you know, but then simple things like, yep. you know, figuring out fermentation and yeah. certainly getting your attenuation down is important too because getting a, a, a low final gravity is goes a long way, I think. It's the only way to really taste what you, what the recipe says. True that. Is to get it attenuated. Yep. To attenuate to its, its final gravity that you've targeted. To its true potential. That's right. All right. For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com, brew on. Cheers.